Um, more misery. Mm. Uh, it's not a happy day in the paper. It's not a happy day in the Telegraph. Cameron reveals hidden mountain of debt. The debt crisis left by Labour is so bad that 10p in every pound paid in tax will soon be needed for the interest payment alone. Uh, the Prime Minister said that without urgent action, our national debt will raise from 770 billion to 1.4 trillion within five years. That equates to 22,000 pounds worth of debt for every man and woman in the country. And child. And child. Now, of course, George and Osborne's going to be announcing or, or outlining some of his cuts or how he's proposing these cuts are going to come into effect later today. Here's Dave yesterday spelling out just how bad it might be. The decisions we make will affect every single person in this country. And the effects of those decisions will stay with us for years. Because the legacy we've been left is so bad, the measures that we need to deal with it will be unavoidably tough. David Cameron speaking there. Uh, anything else, Tracy? Um, yeah, well, this is a weird story, given that there's going to be masses of cuts, uh, even more. The Health Secretary, Andrew Lanzi, says that they're going to impose financial penalties on hospitals if a patient has to be readmitted for emergency treatment within 30 days of discharge. Basically, it's not going to be acceptable for patients to be sent home until their treatment is complete, <laughs> otherwise the hospital will be fined. But if you're cutting back on everything, including the health service, how are you then going to impose fines? Well, they keep saying they're going to maintain frontline services, mm. don't they? So I guess if you're an accountant in the health service, you'd be very concerned about your future, unless, of course, you have to tot up these changes here. <laughs> it it's I guess it's, they're saying it's changing the emphasis of, 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 of the way hospitals view patients. Instead mm. of each patient being a, a little piggy bank that brings with it state money now, they have to ensure that patient goes home and, uh, and is well for a period of time before they can cash yeah, in their exactly. dividends. Exactly. Cut the managers. Yeah. Cut the managers, put more into nursing. And this is a very sad story. The uh, st uh, stereophonic Stuart Cable was found dead yesterday yeah. at the age of 40, uh, choking on his own vomit after a booze binge with pals. He'd Shame. actually... Um, he'd parted company. They all grew up together and they were a proper... Friends become band, become millionaire success story. Um, and even though he, he left the band because he'd had problems with drink and drugs, uh, Kelly and the rest of them stayed really good friends with him and they were all talking and... You know, terrible, Shame. And he terrible. always said, he said, I'll never make it to 40. And he mm. was sort of right. OK, uh, what have you got? Anything more cheery, Craig? No, darling, I'm no. afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Although I suppose you, there is always a good side to every story, isn't there? Well, um, this is in the Times. Police in car chase had to take cover when threatened by a bird. And of course, this is the um, guy on rampage you know, yeah. with the gun, just sort of willy nilly shooting. Well, they've had a lot of flack, the police, haven't they? For the, lots of questions about, well, you know, this was going on for two and a half hours. Why didn't anybody stop him? And, yes, uh, well, quite. And this is their response, actually, the, you know, the police force responding to the criticism that they were slow to react. And, of course, um, you know, they, they make a very good point that the, the policemen were unarmed. Mm. You know, and how do you approach someone that's literally, you know, just flying bullets around the place? You're not, you're not going to be uh, saving lives that way. You'd be only, you know, uh, deleting yourself, Good wouldn't point. you? So, and, and actually, you know, the police force do have, um, you know, a policy to follow in, in regard to that. Unarmed police officers should not normally attempt to stop the vehicle but well, without armed assistance, you know, you have to you have to seek armed assistance, which is uh, it's very, I mean, it just—it's the difference but, between somewhere like Cumbria and London. There was a 16-year-old uh, mixed-race youth walking down the road. I've told this story before. Some of you have heard it. Last winter, it was raining. Uh, somebody had seen him walking down the road. Mistook his umbrella for a <coughs> machine gun. Called the police. And in the next 50 yards, by the time, I mean, I've never seen so many police cars mm. arrive from nowhere with machine guns and pistols. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah. To a, a boy innocently walking down the road with an umbrella, here you have a bloke armed to the teeth and there's no oh, one there that can deal with it. I him. know, but uh, it was just so sad that he went on to yeah. shoot nine other people, you know, which was just uh, horrendous. But, uh, and I can understand, you know, everyone's opinion saying, well, why couldn't you yeah, do yeah. something? Why couldn't you stop him there and then? But, you know, if you're unarmed, I don't think I'd be wanting to get in the no. way of the gun, uh, considering what he did. Uh, next um, story is in The Sun, and this is, of course, the crossbow cannibal story. You know, the guy that um, killed the prostitutes. Uh, the went man to accused, court. the man accused, alleged to have killed alleged to, three prostitutes. Yes, sorry, alleged. Um, <laughs> nodded off in court. Or for appeared 20, to not often well, court. Appeared well. to not often court, yeah. which must have been hideously infuriating for the people, because there was a video link set up, you know, and the family of the the the, the um, dead people and stuff were all sat there having to watch this guy just completely go, you know, mm. out on one, okay. which is just hideous.
Uh, Mums to be left standing, and this is from uh, page three of the, of the mail. Uh, this is a story about um, pregnant women, of course, uh, or seen to be pregnant women, <laughs> uh, having to stand instead of being given a seat on the tube. And... Um, Go on, tell Mister us why. Well, it is difficult, isn't it? Because sometimes, you know, that woman might be just plain fat. <laughs> and there was one guy that actually did make that mistake, and now he... One guy know, is Well, no, she went mental about it. She, went, she was, like, throwing abuse at him for suggesting that she was pregnant and that she needed a seat. She was just obese. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, it does make you wonder. I mean, we've all sat on the tube, haven't we, and gone... Should I? Shouldn't I? <laughs> you know, when someone with, you know, no legs needs a seat, you sort of go, oh, oh, sit down, you know, but it is difficult. If you do have a larger-than-life character or a lady, to make that decision. A little whether snapshot to say... into the mind of Craig Revel yeah. Hall. Right, a little, little snapshot, a little Polaroid or indeed any other kind of instant Not that I travel on tube very often. <laughs> <laughs>